Hello, everyone. Welcome to Miss Info Day. Miss Info Day is hosted by the University of Washington Center for an Informed Public in partnership with the Washington State University Edward R. Murrow College of Communication. I'm Liz Krauss, Miss Info Day Planner at the Center for the Informed Public. I'm so excited to be here with all of you to learn how to resist misinformation and be better informed. Before we start, I want to show you where we're all tuning in from today. We have students, teachers, and librarians tuning in from across Washington and the US, and even some people tuning in internationally. So I want to take a moment to just thank you all so much for being here with us. This session is Fact Checking Claims and Sources with Mike Caulfield and Scott Leadingham. We will start by hearing from Scott. Scott is the Multimedia News Manager for Northwest Public Broadcasting. Go ahead, Scott. Well, thanks, Liz, and I'm so happy to be here for this Misinfo Day. Like Liz said, my name is Scott Leadingham with Northwest Public Broadcasting. That is the NPR and PBS station based at the Edward R. Murrow College of Communication at Washington State University. Maybe some of you listen to us or watch us or get us online, and that's great. And if not, well, come check us out. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about our process for truth telling and verification and why it's so important in the news industry. So I'm going to go through a series of what I would call truths. So truth one, as it relates to the work that we do, beware the objectivity trap. And what I mean by that is there's this concept in journalism called objectivity, which means basically people want you to be completely 100% neutral as if you have no skin in the game for the things on which you're reporting. And that sounds really good, right? But in truth, it's almost impossible to do that. No person can be 100% objective in all things that they do, because we all bring our own backgrounds and experiences and biases of any kind into a situation. So it's okay for journalists to have that background and bring that to the things on which they're reporting. But the things that we have to be careful of is adhering to ethics. And in journalism, there are in fact ethics, just like a lot of professions have. Lawyers and, and medical professionals have that as well. It's not an oxymoron in journalism like jumbo shrimp, shrimp, right? Journalism ethics codes are very important, but they're not enforced in the sense like there's no law that enforces them. It's things that we all agree to do and they're, they're guidelines to help us out. What is more important than I think than objectivity and being completely 100% neutral, because again, that's almost impossible to do, is to be fair and accurate in everything that we do. Journalists of all kinds, even opinion journalists who write columns from an opinionated standpoint, they too can practice real, thorough, accurate journalism as long as they are fair in doing so. So truth two, journalism is a process not a product. So let's just sit with that for a second. A process, not a product. So it's not like we're sitting here on an assembly line cranking out news stories or widgets, right, for some machine. That is, in fact, what we're doing in the sense that it's an entire process from the design phase to all the things that get put on that assembly line to it rolling off and being sold to consumers, if you think of it like that. That's what we're doing in journalism. It's that whole process, not just a single thing that rolls off the assembly line that someone in that factory is making. Another thing to remember, stenography is not reporting. So stenography is just the process of writing things down. So in a court proceeding, right, if you've ever been in a courtroom, you see a stenographer in there. That's the person who is typing out everything as it goes. So there's an official transcript of everything that happened in the courtroom. That's not what journalism is. That is a part of what we do. We, have, we certainly record events and we, we talk to people and write down what they're saying and, and record it accurately. And later we, we write it down and, and publish it or broadcast it. But that's not the only thing that we do. We do so much more in that process. So here's a saying that uh, we go by in journalism, a few th sayings actually. One, if your mother says she loves you, get a second source, right? All that's saying is just reminding us that we need to back up all the information that we hear. We can't just hear one thing and immediately publish it. We have to get background information. We have to corroborate that actually and get a backup uh, source for that information from an independent outside source who can verify the information that we're hearing. And here's another thing, 
believe half of what you see and nothing of what you hear. That's just a, a way of reminding ourselves that there can be a lot of mischievous and fake things out there and people are, are trying to fake us out and give us bad information perhaps. So half of what you see and nothing of what you hear. You might remember a few weeks ago on TikTok, there was this big viral craze about the actor Tom Cruise having these, these videos out there. Well, those were fake videos and, and something that's called a deep fake that you might have heard about recently. They're sophisticated technology that help us uh, make fake videos and they seem very accurate. So remember, believe half of what you see and nothing of what you hear. So always be skeptical of not only what people tell you, but why they are telling you. So like I said, half of what you see, nothing of what you hear, but also be skeptical of the person who is telling you this information. Why are they telling you this information? Are they really who they say they are? Say they're in, they are claiming some sort of fraud or, or bad actions at a company and they say they work for this company. You need to prove that they actually do work for this company. Can they show you a pay stub or some other form of identification? And why are they telling you this information as the journalist? Maybe they are trying to use your platform as a way to get out their bad information and you need to be skeptical of that. Maybe they went to another news organization or other journalist first and those people looked into it and they decided not to pursue it. And now they're going after you to, to try to get you, me as the journalist, to try to share that bad information. Truth three, corrections have short lives, but errors live forever. So there's one thing that I often say about our own reporting and it's this, I'd rather be last and right than first and wrong. There's always this, this big rush in, in terms of breaking news. We see this all the time, like the, the recent tragic situation in Georgia with, with those shootings. People wanna rush to get out the first information and be the first and they, you see this all the time, exclusive, breaking news, these sorts of things. As far as I know, there's no award out there in journalism for the first person to report something. There's lots of stuff to award good breaking news, but that breaking news still has to go through that process I talked about. So remember, there's no award for being the first to report something. I'd rather be first and right than last and wrong. Excuse me, I'd rather be last and right than first and wrong. And here's a, a saying that I like to remember as well. It's from a, a journalist and a digital media trainer that I've known for a long time named Sri Srinivasan. On Twitter, his handle is just S-R-E-E. -E. He says, nearly everyone will miss nearly everything you do online. So let's say you have a couple thousand followers or tens of thousands of followers. Most of them are not gonna see the time that you tweet something, right? But a lot of people might end up seeing the bad information that you shared, the incorrect information you share about a breaking news event a lot fewer of those people are going to wind up seeing the correction that you make later on down the road. Truth four, journalism is based on credibility. So some of you in high school might have uh, learned about what's called the gold standard. That's what the U.S. economy used to be based on. All of our paper currency used to have actual literal pieces of gold backing it up to say that it has value. Well, that's no longer the case. That, that went away in the 1930s, we have something now called a fiat currency, meaning it's just backed by the faith of the US government. Well, in journalism, we have sort of a similar thing in the sense that there's no laws governing exactly how we report. There's no tests that we have to take, like I said before, like you have to be for a lawyer or a doctor. It's based on the, the accuracy and the credibility that we have built up for ourselves over time and that we sort of enforce within the industry and that we teach new journalists coming in. So in that way, we are always working to build, maintain, and strengthen our credibility because that is what our work is based on. So last truth, everyone is responsible for the information they share, not just journalists. You are included in that. So let's take an example of this from the recent past. Uh, Dr. Reza Aslan is a, a famous uh, religious scholar and historian. He's often on CNN and other broadcast news outlets talking about things in the news that relate to religion. He's a pretty well-known person. So a few weeks ago, when all the bad stuff was happening in Texas with that, that terrible weather and millions of people out of power and all the bad things going on there, Senator Te Ted Cruz of Texas 
got into a lot of heat, <laughs> no pun intended there, for what he was saying and doing around that time, including going to Cancun, Mexico, right in the middle of that. Didn't look so good. So then people uh, found, supposedly, this tweet that Ted Cruz had made years ago in 2016. And Dr. Reza Aslan put this on Twitter. He said, this is a real tweet about what Ted Cruz supposedly had said. And it is this, I'll believe in climate change when Texas freezes over. So supposedly he said that in 2016, and it seems sort of ironic at the time now in 2021 when Reza Aslan was saying that. So look at that right there, 19.5 thousand retweets, at least at the time that the screen capture was taken. Well, in reality, what happened? Let's go to a little bit later. Dr. Aslan says, oh, I guess it's not, meaning it's not a real tweet. He was wrong. That thing that he had retweeted, supposedly from Senator Ted Cruz, was not a real tweet. It was photoshopped. It was an image that maybe had been found on Twitter or Facebook or other social media sites and it circulated widely. So that's the danger that we have in these sorts of things. You have to be very suspicious of when you see a, a tweet out there. If it's not the actual tweet, if it's not a link to it, and it's just a picture of something, that is a big red flag. I see it all the time. So it's not just journalists who have to be aware of that. It's all of us. Thanks, and back to you, Liz. Thank you. Thanks so much, Scott. So now we'll hear from Mike Caulfield. Mike is a digital literacy expert and the director of blended and networked learning at Washington State University, Vancouver. He is the author of the Check Please Fact Checking course and creator of the SIFT Fact Checking Method. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks a lot, Liz. I'm really excited to be here, especially seeing that map of uh, how many locations we're pulling in. Uh, it's great to see so many people engaged in this uh, subject. It's, it's close to my heart, but it's always nice to see it's close to other people's heart uh, as well. I'm going to jump uh, right into it. Uh, uh, we're going to go through some techniques really quickly here. Um, but I want to remind you that there is there are some links that have been sent out to participants here. Uh, a toolkit, I think, is maybe the name. Uh, Liz, can, Liz is nodding. Great. I, I nailed it. Um, and those links have this the stuff we're going to show here, these methods, uh, show you how to do this, have more examples, uh, and we'll walk you through some of the uh, some of the details. So if I'm going really quickly, don't worry. Uh, most of this stuff you can find uh, in the materials that will be shared. Uh, so let's start with this. I, I like starting. Um, I don't know why this one cracks me up. Uh, I like starting with this this example here. Uh, these are two food products um, or supposed food products, right? One is a uh, a, a, a chicken, a fried chicken that is in between a donut as a bun, right? Like a chicken sandwich with a donut as a bun, and it says here, uh, you know, it says uh, Kentucky Fried uh, Chicken, you know, and donuts, right? That's so, so that's item number one. Uh, and then uh, for item number two, competing for, uh, you know, the, the grand prize of American cuisine, um, it's Monster Energy Ham, right? This idea that Monster has put out a caffeinated ham, or, or maybe I guess, I'm not sure caffeinated, maybe it's caffeinated, maybe it's got B vitamins, maybe it's got electrolytes, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, Two products. Question is, which of the products is real, which is, which is fake? Are they both real? Are they both fake? There are two different ways that people tend to go about deciding this when they look at it. Both of them are bad. Uh, so uh, the, the ways I'm going to talk about right now, I really do want to stress. Uh, these, are, these are two uh, bad techniques to determine this. The first thing people say is, I'm going to check and see if it's photoshopped. And the idea is, well, we'll take a look here and we'll see, do we see anything that makes it look like this was created, in, you know, pasted in or something like that? You know, is this, you know, does this seem a little fuzzy down here? This is bad for a number of reasons. First of all, when things are photoshopped, people miss them. Uh, secondly, if you look at any photo long enough, it starts to look a little fake. This is an experiment you can try yourself. Uh, in your own home, uh, but it starts to look, it starts, just starts to look a little fake if you look at anything too long. And so a lot of times people will say, I'm going to check if it's photoshopped, and they'll end up really psyching themselves out and convincing them something, themselves something that is real, is fake. Also, Photoshop doesn't, isn't the only thing you could do. I mean, we could actually create a completely real, you know, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken Donut, and it could still be fake. All, all it takes is two donuts and some chicken, 
right? It's not exactly, it's not exactly like deep fake technology here. Uh, you can create this at home yourself, even if it doesn't exist yet, right? So looking for Photoshopping, not so good. The second thing is that people do, and again, not a great idea is people just ask, is this plausible? Right? Is this plausible? Is it re could it really be the case that we are now eating uh, chicken sandwiches made of donuts in this country? Can, can it really be the case that we're now putting B vitamins or caffeine in ham? And the thing is, again, uh, that works a lot of the time. If you have a deep understanding of the area you're looking at, if you're a food industry like expert, in your daily life as the food industry, you might actually have some pretty good intuitions. Um, but uh, if you're not, your idea of what's out there in terms of food is probably going to be somewhat limited. It's going to be limited by what you eat, by what your uh, family eats. Uh, and it's not necessarily what looks plausible to you is not necessarily going to look plausible to other people. So what's the alternative here, right? So the third way, the third way uh, is something that my friend Sam Weinberg calls lateral reading. And the third way is we just want to get off of this page, right? Uh, we want to stop looking at the photo. We want to start looking at what people say about the photo, what people say about the claim. Uh, and so in this case here, this is that photo on uh, Instagram. And in this case, we're going to, we're just going to uh, uh, select that, right click, uh, command click on a Mac, uh, and uh, take a look and see, hey, if Kentucky Fried Chicken has a sandwich out like, out like this, probably it's probably been reported by some uh, news uh, um, uh, publications, news sites, right? And what do we find? We find that actually, as we scroll down here, we find that it actually is being reported. It's being reported by quite a number of uh, um, organizations. USA Today uh, talks a little bit about it, uh, sweet and savory meals, et cetera. We might want to click in there, get a little more, uh, get a little more information. But we can see even as we, even as we scroll down here, uh, Newsweek, CNN, um, I think AL is, um, CNN. I think AL is uh, Alabama, is, is like an Alabama um, uh, news site. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but again, even uh, in this case here, we are seeing that um, we are seeing that, that there's broad coverage of this, the sort of thing we would expect if this sandwich was real. And we're seeing here, we can click in, we can do more research. But I'd say even at this point, if you want to share that, you're, you're good to go. Uh, so what about this monster caffeinated ham, right? Well, oh my gosh, it's not available to me. Um, well, okay. So here, this is a, this is an interesting thing that comes up sometimes. I think actually I am on my daughter's Chrome profile, which is somehow blocking Twitter because of some, whatever, whatever they do for E-rate in the schools that keeps you from accessing all the sites. You might not be able to access that Twitter site in school, but it doesn't matter because in this case, you can actually uh, click through uh, and you can simply uh, throw into Google something like that. Uh, you can throw in a um, monster caffeinated ham. Oh, my typing is a... Uh... All right, monster caffeinated ham. And what do we see here? We're gonna see a different search engine result page profile Already you see the difference here. With the other one, we were seeing CNN, we we're seeing the Alabama site, Newsweek, uh, Eater.com. What are we seeing here? We're seeing Snopes. That doesn't mean that it's fake. Snopes covers things that are true too. Snopes is a fact checking site. But generally, if you're looking and you see Snopes, if you see a BuzzFeed fact check, uh, if, if you're seeing terms like debunked, it's, it's not a great sign. And what you can do uh, to dig more into that issue is you can click through. Uh, I recommend, usually if there's a fact checker, I recommend using the fact checker, not necessarily um, because you like Snopes or BuzzFeed News as fact checker or truth or fiction or whatever fact checker you like. But the one thing that Snopes will do for you is it'll be really conscious about not only saying, hey, this is true or false, right? But making sure you don't have to take their word for it. So they'll give you all the links if you want to go through those links, uh, figure out what you think about the story, you can go through and you can use these links to understand uh, how they came uh, to this conclusion. Uh, in this, for example, um, one of the things that they note uh, is this uh, person has previously um, publicized such things as a vape pen for babies. Like this is a meme account that posts uh, that sort of thing, right? So go to Snopes, check it out. So 
overall, this is a different uh, sort of way of approaching things than some people are useful to used to. I think most of us do this with some things, but we don't do it as regularly as we should, right? But I'm here to tell you that it's 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 easy, it's good practice, and if you get quick at it, you can do it on a lot more things than you might think. The steps we talk about in SIFT uh, are a first stop. Just ask yourself, do you know who's sharing this? Do you know why you trust them? Do you know who they are at all? What their connection to the subject is? Uh, do you know anything about the claim? Are you an expert in this? Do you have some sort of what we call domain knowledge in it? Uh, if you don't, then go and do one of these things. You can investigate the source. Just see if the source sharing this with you is does have a deep expertise in the issue or maybe they're a reporter who's, do, who's doing some reporting uh, on this on this issue you can find better coverage that's kind of what we did with the uh when we looked uh, for the uh kfc uh thing we didn't stick on that instagram page uh we went and we tried to see is there some decent news coverage out here the same thing on the monster ham in that case we ended up at fact checkers uh, and then trace claims, quotes, and media to the original context. And the idea here uh, is just a lot of times we see, um, you know, we see the, uh, the the tweet that's referencing a blog post that's referencing another blog post that's referencing some reporting of reporting of a press release about a research study, right? And in that process, sometimes things get garbled. So sometimes going to the original reporting source. Uh, or in some cases, the original research source, if, if we're, you know, if we're okay with reading that, that uh, the research, if we're familiar with the research, um, is the better choice, right? So this is an example that shows, I think, all of those different ways that we can look at that. And we'll see here, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if these Twitter links will work. It's going to be a, it's going to be a great surprise. Um, but uh, here is at least a screenshot of a, twi of, of a tweet. It says, first time I have noticed the MSN reporting on suspected vaccine death. And it says that marvelous, Mar marvelous Marvin Hagler, right? The great boxer, right? The great boxer, if you don't know about him, look him up, watch some of the fights. He, he, was, he was amazing that he has succumbed to a death that's related to the COVID vaccine, right? That's what this, this account is, is claiming. So we can look at this a number of ways. Uh, the first thing is we, we do is we stop. We actually don't know Marvin. I, d I don't think any of you know Marvin Hagler. So we actually don't know if this is true or false. Oh, thank God. Uh, this is a, uh, we don't know if this is true or false. Um, so does this person have any inside knowledge? You know, are they a family member, something like that? There's nothing here that suggests they are. Uh, even if there was something here, we might still want to see that that's verified, think about it. But it's certainly not the case that this person has inside knowledge about uh, Marvin Hagler's death and whether it was COVID vaccine uh, related. She does give us a source. And if we go to that source, um, we will see, as all the ads pop up here uh, momentarily, we will see that at least this site is claiming uh, that uh, I guess uh, Tommy Hearns, who was a rival, a boxing rival of, of, of Marvelous Marvin, um, s Tommy Hearns uh, said that he was in an ICU fighting the effects of the vaccine, right? But one of the things we know here is we don't know, maybe you don't know what the Daily Mail is. I think most of you probably don't know. Some of you might. If you, if you do, you probably know what's coming next. Um, we can look up the Daily Mail in Wikipedia and just get a sense of what the Daily Mail is. Is this a well-respected newspaper? Is this sort of like the New York Times of, uh, of Britain? Um, and we'll find, uh, I think, pretty quickly that that is not the case. In fact, um, although the Daily Mail has won a number of awards, uh, it has been noted for its unreliably, unreliability and widely criticized for printing sensationalist and inaccurate scare stories of science and medical research. Does that mean everything printed in the Daily Mail is wrong? No. Does it mean that the Daily Mail is never right about anything? Does it mean this claim is wrong? It doesn't mean any of that. It just means if you were thinking about where would I want to go for information on Marvin Hagler's death, it probably would not be the it probably would not be the paper that's associated with scare stories about medical research, right? That's not a great uh, first stop. So we, we're not we're not passing some sort of eternal judgment on this. We're just saying, hey, maybe this is not, maybe this is not the, the best use of our time, the Daily Mail. And so what can we put in here? We can put in uh, Marvin, by the way, his, his real name was actually um, 
was actually Marvelous Marvin. He changed it like in the in the 80s. Um, so uh, we put in Marvel and ha Marvin Hagler died of COVID-9 vaccine. And what do we see immediately here? Uh, we see that uh, this is a local news site. You can look up that site if you want. Um, widow disputes claims, right? So someone that should know, right? His wife uh, disputes the claims, uh, didn't die. Wife says, refutes rumors about how he died. Uh, and we can go uh, deeper into that. And what you'll find if you click into any of these stories, I won't uh, in the interest of time, uh, but if you click into any of these stories, what you can find is the only report that this was due to the vaccine, at least at this point, uh, was from this uh, rival boxer. You know, it's ancient history. And, and, you know, it's not like it's not like they're enemies or something, but was was from someone unassociated uh, with uh, with Hagler at that point. Uh, the wife uh, denies that this is the case. Uh, and so I think we can be there might be new news that comes out about this in a few days. But I think at the moment we can say there's no real evidence that this was the case. Right. We'll, we'll kind of keep an open open mind like, you know, maybe there's a 5% chance something else comes out. But for the moment, we're not going to share that, right? We're not going to share that uh, because it's uh, unsubstantiated rumor uh, by people uh, who don't, wouldn't really have an idea of what, uh, of what happened. Um, th so this is the basic process, right? If you think about it, uh, what did we do? Uh, here we stopped. Uh, we said we don't really, we don't know Marvin Hagler, right? We, we're, not, we're not friends with his doctor. Um, we realized that the source, when we did a quick check, the source didn't really have any sort of inside uh, information either. They were not in a specific position to know. Uh, so we looked and we tried to find better coverage. Now, we could have even gone a step further. If we wanted to trace uh, claims, quotes, and context, we could actually maybe find our way back to that initial post by Hearns that claimed that the death was from the vaccine. Uh, if you did that, what you'd find is Hearns the guy that claimed this initially, he de deleted the Instagram post himself, right? He isn't even standing behind his story, right? So, so again, these moves, as you see, they're, they're, they're quite quick. You don't have to do all of them. Sometimes you can stop at move one if something uh, looks particularly fishy or if something looks particularly well supported. Here's an example that, that I like. Uh, I like to sort of set a scenario up for people because you're not just looking for information. You're looking for information for a specific reason. Uh, and one thing that a lot of people are trying to reduce the amount of meat in their diet, right? And they want to make sure that as they reduce meat in their diet, that they're, they're, they're eating healthy, right? They're eating healthy um, non-meat alternatives um, or eating more of them or whatever. And, uh, you know, I actually, I, I love a burger, but I, again, I, I, uh, I have a daughter who is a, a vegetarian and she's always trying to figure out what's best uh, you know, what's best for her, what, what food products are out there. And so there's this ingredient guide and maybe I think, oh, I'll send this to my daughter. You know, she'll, she'll use it to make better choices. Um, and you find that you can do things like look up um, alpha chicken nuggets. Let's see what's in alpha chicken nuggets, right? What's in these, this meatless product called alpha chicken nuggets? What's in it, right? There's a lot of stuff in here. Let's check out this one. This is methyl cellulose. So that's in, that's in this meatless, well, that's okay. Um, this is the active ingredient in many laxatives. Are you telling me that my my chicken nuggets, my meatless chicken nuggets, are a, a laxative? That that's really concerning, right? And so maybe you start to delve more into it. Maybe you start to look at all the stuff in your freezer and try to figure out what does what does this have in it? What does? But you haven't stopped, right? You haven't stopped to realize you don't even know what site you've landed on. Right? Someone shared this with you, you found it in a Google search. However you did it, who is, behind, who is behind this site? And how might that help us understand how to interpret uh, this site? So we're gonna do this, it's called the Just Add Wikipedia trick. Uh, Wikipedia isn't good for some things, but for this sort of thing where you're just trying to find what is an information source, what is an organization about, it's good for that sort of thing. Uh, and in this case, it brings up the Center for Organizational Research and Education, which turns out to be the, the organization behind uh, this, uh, you know, clean food, meat-free facts uh, sort of site. And what do we see immediately when we go and we check it out? This is actually, um, it's a lobbying organization. I'm not sure if uh, y'all know what a lobbying organization is, but it's an organization that tries to put political pressure um, usually for the benefit of some group, a lot of times for the benefit of certain corporations to pass laws that are in their favor, right? So you can think about like, 
you know, the oil industry might use a lobbying group to, to, to argue that fracking laws, right, should be, um, uh, should be loosened, right? Um, so on and so forth, right? But it's not, it's not a research center, it's not a nutrition site, it's actually a lobbying site that's lobbying on behalf of other people, clients, right? They take clients and then they try to advance the interests of the clients. Now, if you look through this, it's not, they kind of keep their clients close to their chest, right? So they, they don't show you necessarily who the clients are, uh, but one of the things that we can we can see is some of the some of the organizations who have said they have worked with this group before. Um, you know what do you what do you find? Uh, you find uh, Wendy's, uh, Outback Steakhouse, Tyson Foods. If you know like Tyson Chicken and Steak and those sorts of things, Tyson Foods is one of their clients. Um, Pilgrim's Pride, which turns out that I think uh, to be another uh, big uh, producer of meat, um, and then many other donors. Does this mean the information on the site is wrong? That they are just because they happen to have these business relationships with a bunch of meat producers and they're producing the site that is scaring you about meat-free products? Does it mean it's wrong? No, it doesn't mean it's wrong, but it means that it's probably not your best choice, right? We're just gonna keep coming to this. Like nobody says, hey, I want I want I want a clear idea of how to how to go meat-free in a healthy way. I'm gonna ask the meat industry. That's not this not this no one said that ever right no one said that ever uh, and as a matter of fact once we get that once we see that once we know what we're looking at the whole thing looks a little different to us doesn't it because i was i kind of passed over this before i was just interested in these alpha chicken nuggets but look it's not just they're giving us alpha chicken nuggets when i click it it's alpha chicken nuggets versus chicken nuggets right and you know wow look at this it's kind of miraculous you got all these disturbing things under alpha chicken nuggets right and then you just got chicken nuggets it's like you're good <laughs> okay so again it's not a broad claim it doesn't mean everything's wrong whatever it just means find somewhere else to sort of start this investigation that doesn't have these industry associations maybe something that's a little more concerned about your personal health a little less concerned about um the interests of, uh, of of their of their uh, clients, right? All right, um, we are. Uh, let's let's do this one here. Um, this one I find really interesting. I don't know if people saw this um, before, um, but uh, this here, if you can see it, um, this here is it's a, these are birds, right? Do you know what a murmuration is? Like a murmuration. It's like when starlings uh, kind of make a formation in the sky, like these sorts of swirling formations. And this is claiming, right? This person is claiming that this photograph is a murmuration. And look at this, this is crazy. It's a, it's a bunch of birds that look like they're forming a big bird, right? And I kind of think about this as like, you know, like when the transformers get together and they like make a bigger transformer. I'm doing that right. That's how it works, right? They all kind of like, or is that Voltron? I can't remember. It's either Voltron or Transformers. But so this is like a Voltron Transformers sort of deal with the bird, right? Uh, and they're coming together and they're making like massive bird, right? Only for a second. We don't think it's more than a second, but we think at least that this photo, is this photo real? For a second, was there a group of birds that formed this sort of bigger bird formation. Uh, and uh, when we look at it, we again, we stop and we look at um, this person here, probably not a great source on their own. This person is a poet, I love poetry, but you know, it's, it's not like it's an ornithologist. It's not like it's the photographer, but we do actually see when we look at it that the photographer, this is the person that took it and uh, we note that they claim at least to be the 2021 Irish press photographer of the year. And we can check that, right? We can actually, we can actually check that. Um, we could search this person's name. This is investigate the source, right? Uh, and we can just search their name for that. Let's take off that, just edit that. Um, and they said they won an award. So let's, um, let's just type in award. 
and see, and actually the Irish Times turns out to be a reputable publication. They did. They're the photographer of the year. If we scroll down on this, what we realize is they're not, they don't make digital art or something like that. They're a sports photographer, right? They, they, they take pictures of, of real things. That in itself makes me think it's real. It's, it's a photographer wouldn't rest, risk their reputation, you know, uh, in this way, if, uh, you know, to fake something like this. I don't think, you know, uh, we can go further though, because if we, uh, if we actually, uh, say James Crombie and we, I don't know, say birds or something like that, it turns out that this, um, this picture has not only been published in a lot of reputable publications, right? In this case, the Irish Times, it turns out that, they, that while he was taking pictures, uh, he was also filming a video of it. I should always remember to do this. We got to get through the uh, ad first here. Um, and you'll see this, it's kind of amazing. The birds are swirling around and you'll see that just for a moment, you can, it, in the audio of this, you can hear him clicking the camera and then there you go just for that moment. And he was able to, he was able to capture, capture that moment, right? And uh, you can actually hear in the audio, uh, you know, uh, someone says, oh my God, that looks like a bird, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so you've got it published in these places. Uh, you've got a, a credible source. And when you trace it back to the source, right? When you trace it back to where it's published, you find this additional information, this video that really uh, conclusively proves uh, that this was a, um, this was a, a photo captured of a real event. The final point I'd make is, is uh, one about, you can't always get an answer and uh, sometimes that can be frustrating, but sometimes you just gotta wait. Uh, and the example I use for that is a couple days ago, uh, this appeared. I don't know if you remember MoviePass. MoviePass was the company that decided that their model uh, was going to be, um, their, their model uh, was uh, of, uh, uh, their business model was gonna, gonna be, they were going to, um, Charge ten dollars to see all the movies you wanted, right? Um, and uh, they went out of business because it, it turns out that's not a profitable business model. But someone's saying that they're bringing that back, and I don't want to go into a theater now. I, 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 I'm going to stay out of theaters until this whole pandemic's over. But I'd like to go back. This could be really exciting. Uh, and it says and they're going to reveal this in three days and eighteen hours. Now, one of the things that you can do, of course, is you can uh, you can do our trick and just say, hey, is there any news about this uh, movie pass is it really going to relaunch and what you'll find is that actually nobody knows no one's quite sure who put up this website no one's quite sure if they're related to movie pass if they're talking about relaunching the original movie pass uh, there's a lot of uncertainty there um, and in that case though it's not as if your investigation was for nothing uh, if you wanted to share that movie pass story you could share it with other people just saying hey there's a lot of doubt about this but you know there's always hope uh, and so in that case, you might want to, um, you might want to just share it, but give a little caveat, uh, and, uh, come back. I mean, in three days, however many hours we should know, uh, you know, what exactly is going on with that, whether it's bogus or whether it's something real, uh, and it's okay. It's okay to, uh, um, it's okay to reach the end of an investigation and say, Hey, we just don't know yet. Uh, and this happens with this. It happens with a lot of more serious things. Uh, as well. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the method. Um, again, uh, stop, investigate the source, find better coverage, trace claims, quotes, and media to the original context. Um, these are quick moves. You don't have to do them all every time. But if you do them, very often uh, getting that information can tell you whether this is worth your time. And even where the, the source or the claim turns out to be true, it sort of grounds you in a deeper understanding, a deeper context of what you're looking at, so that if you want to go in depth, you're better set up to do so. Um, thanks for your time today. Uh, I really enjoyed this, uh, and I'm going to hand it back to Liz. Okay, thank you so much, Mike. I'm going to cross my fingers for Movie Pass. I'll be checking that in three days. Uh, and thank you, Scott. Thanks to both of you for speaking with us today. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. Uh, like Mike mentioned, we will be sending out a toolkit with lessons that have activities like the ones you were shown today that you can keep doing in your classroom. And we hope you can stick around for the next session. And if you missed any of the sessions today, we'll also be sending out recordings of those links. So once again, thanks for tuning in. Bye.